going to tell you about the timetable module in Fidina today. So for that we have to go to academics and here timetable. And first is we have to set the weekdays. So we have to create weekdays by clicking on this. And weekdays can be common for all the batches which is here common. Or if it is dependent on a batch you need to select that batch and select the different weekday criteria. Once we have set the weekdays we have to create class timing set. So first we have to click on this class timing set and we need to click on new. Once we click on new it is going to ask us the name of the class timing set. So let's see what are these class timing sets. So here once you give a name you have to click on class timings and this is what actually class timing sets mean. So we need to set some timings where the periods will happen for a particular day. And these timings are followed for all the days in Fidina. So I'm setting period 1, period 2, period 3 and lunch break as a class timing set for a particular grade. It can also be dependent on many grades at once or many batches at once. It can also be separate for each batch. Those many class timing sets have to be created in that case. So I have to click on add. When you click on add, it is going to ask you the name, so period 1, the start time and the end time and whether it is a break or not. So in this way, the class timing sets have to be created. Once the class timing sets are created, we have to assign them to the batches, which means we need to tell what is the batch that is going to follow these class timings that we just created. So I'll be selecting the class timing. I'll be selecting the batches that follow it. It may be one or more. And I have to click on this arrow and they're going to appear like this. So once I've done this, now I need to create the timetable. So I'll go to this timetable menu again and you will see this link create timetable. And here you need to select the duration. When do you want the timetable to be followed by the students? Just remember here that once the timetable is created, another timetable cannot be created in the same duration. That means if I am creating a timetable starting 1 Jan 2015 to 1 December 2015, I cannot create another timetable for 1 July to 1 August or any other such combination which falls between this timetable. The meaning here is that all the batches must follow this timetable in Fidina. So they must start on 1st Jan and they must end on 1st December. In case that is not the case, in case some batches are starting after a week or after a month, in that case you need not put data for the, those batches during this timetable duration. So it can be taken as empty. So you need not set timetables, you need not set classes, you need not mark attendance. So let me create a timetable set. Let's say for a particular duration, I'm just creating it for a week now. Let's say from 14th to 16th. Once I've created it, I'll be able to view it by going to timetable menu back and edit timetable and all the timetable durations that I've created will be appearing like this. So I'll be selecting the time period that I just created and I can click on edit entries and all the batches who start and end date fall in that timetable will be appearing. What this means is, for example, for G3A 2014, which is a batch, the start and end date will be having 14 and 16 December in between. That is why this batch is appearing here. So I'll be selecting the batch and according to the class timing set that I've selected, that I've managed for this batch, it is appearing like this. All the subjects of this batch will appear here. So now I need to create this timetable or set this timetable for this batch and for all these subjects. So I'll be selecting the subject and the employee associated with the subject will appear. It means for G3A 2014 for math mathematics subject I might have assigned this employee using employee subject association. Now to assign this mathematics and Sahil to some allotments we need to click on those cells and we need to drag and drop this box over the cells. 
In the same way, I can do it for another subject. In the same way, for all the subjects, this has to be done. And the timetable will be created. In case you've missed assigning an employee to a subject, you are also given that option here. So you can click on it. You'll be taken to Employee Subject Association. You can associate that sub employee with the subject and you can come back and that employee will ap appear here and you can assign that employee the slots. In case there are some checks and an employee or the maximum periods violates that check, it is going to show you here. For example, weekly subject limit is reached on period 2. It means weekly subject limit for one of the subjects which is science, I have reached the maximum periods per day and I'm trying to allocate more than what I've actually set while creating this subject. So all these warnings, appropriate warnings will be appearing. Now either you can continue this, which will make a change here, or you can cancel it. So you can see that if I continue it, it is forcefully going to allot this, tip, this subject. So all the appropriate checks are here. Once this is done, we can view the timetable. So we have to go to view timetable. We'll select the duration which I just created and I'll select the batch and I'll be able to view the timetable. And then we have teacher timetable which shows us for a particular duration of timetable which teacher is busy and during what timings and on what days. So this shows the full timetable. Now note that it is dependent on the duration of the timetable that you're selecting. So all the teachers are not appearing. The teachers who are associated or who are assigned classes during that duration will only be appearing here. Then we have institutional timetable where for a particular date, for example, for 14th of December, I have done some assignments. So I'll be showing you that. For a particular date, it is showing you the timetable entries for that subject. So you can see, for this date, for this batch, these are the timetable, these are the classes that are going to happen. So it is showing, it will show for all the batches if there are timetables that are created. Then we have timetable tracker. Timetable tracker is used when an employee has to be replaced or substituted by another employee for some period. So let's say for some batch, which is K1B 2014, for some date, let me select fifth, let's say fourth, you will see, see here that for 9 to 10, 15, there is history which is taken by this employee. Now let's say this employee was not able to come or was not able to take the subject. So I can replace this employee for a future or a past date as well. So let's say I want to replace this employee with some other employee. So let's say this is the employee who is substituted for Deepa. I select for history. It means now history in between these timings for this batch will be taken by this employee instead of this employee. So this is sort of a last moment change that is done. And these changes that you do here will not be reflected in the original timetable that we created for this batch. So these changes have to be tracked by using swapped timetable report. So I'll be selecting a particular duration. So let's say fourth. And here the change that I did is appearing. So we can see one hyphen would mean that this employee E11 has taken one less period than he was supposed to take while doing work allotment for this employee. So when I created the timetable, based on that he's taking one less and E2 is taking one more and it also shows you these details. Now, before going to classroom allocation here, I would like to tell you about work allotment. 
work allotment is actually similar to what we did in employee subject association so here you will see all the batches are listed and in front of that it is showing subjects along with who is taking the subject so what all we did using employee subject association is getting reflected here for example for G5A 2014 for mathematics I have assigned Veena as the employee and Darcy as another employee using employee subject association so it is reflecting here if I change here the same change would be reflected in employee subject association and vice versa it is both ways now the extra thing that you see here is on the right hand side which shows you the concept of remaining deficit and okay so let's understand this so let's say that there's an employee E2 who's who is in grade 3 grade 4 and grade 4 means that this employee can take six maximum classes per week so this is what I've set for the employee while admitting the employee I have selected the grade of the employee as grade 4 and in grade 4 I have set maximum periods per week to be 6 which means E2 can take 6 maximum classes per week now let's say there is a subject called mathematics and while creating this subject I have set the classes to be 6 maximum classes for this subject per week now let's say this E2 employee is associated with maths. So what would it mean? It would mean that this employee is taking the correct number of classes that he is supposed to take. So this is what you see on the right hand side OK for some of the employees. It means as per their grade they are taking the correct number of classes. So let me tell you another scenario. Let's say there is an employee E3. And this E3 employee is in grade 3. And let's say he's going to take he can take four maximum class per week. And he's assigned to a subject, mathematics, which he's taking six, which which has six maximum classes per week, which I set while creating the subject. So in this case, he is taking four extra classes, sorry, two extra classes. So in this case, we say it as deficit. So the employee E3 is taking two deficit or two extra than what he is supposed to take as per his grade. Now let's take the third scenario. So let's say there is this employee E4 who is in grade let's say 6 and he can take 8 maximum classes per week and he's assigned to mathematics. So here for this E4 employee if he's associated with mathematics he'll be taking 2. Here it will be deficit and he'll be taking 2 remaining. So it means that he can take 2 more classes. he can take two more classes as per his grade. So these are the three terms that you will observe here remaining, deficit and OK. Then we have classroom allocation. So classroom allocation is used when you have a big institute and you want to allocate buildings as per the subjects or as per the time durations or as per the batches. So in that case first we have to set the buildings so we have to add a building by clicking here. We have to give the name of the building. So let's say we, have, we are giving West Block like I have given. And in that building we can add rooms. So we have to click on the name and add rooms option will appear here. To add a room you just have to give the name of the room and the capacity of the students that it can take. So in this way I have created two rooms in this West Block building. In the same way you can create as many buildings and as many rooms. Once you've done this, you need to allocate classes or you need to allocate batches. So let's understand what is weekly and date specific. 
Now weekly would mean that you need to set for a, for a week you need to set the classrooms and they'll repeat for the full duration of the timetable. So we need to set for a week and it is going to repeat for the full duration of the timetable. And monthly would mean monthly or date specific which is the other way. This would mean that we need to set for a month for all dates and it is going to repeat for the full duration of the timetable. So let me show you weekly. So weekly let me select this timetable. So it means let's say this timetable was for 1 January 2015 to 1 December 2015. So what I'm doing is I'm setting it for the first week. It means I'm setting it from Monday to Friday and for all the Mondays, two Fridays that are going to appear in this timetable, the same classroom allocation will be followed. It means that let's say for Monday I'm setting for this mathematics G3A 2014. I'm allocating this room like this by dragging and dropping. And the same for this subject. It means G3A 2014 on Monday will always be sitting on N1. Will always be attending the classes in N1 room for all the Mondays that appear in this timetable. Similarly, I need to do for Tuesday. So for all the two Tuesdays, G3A 2014 will be allocated to N2 and so on. So this has to be done for a week. So Monday, Tuesday till Friday. And once this is done for all the weekdays, it will be same till the duration of the timetable. So this is about weekly. Then we have date specific. Date specific is similar. The difference is that instead of allocating it for a week, it will give you the full month duration. So it will give you 1, 2, 3 till 30th or 31st. And all the one first date of the month will be having same allocation. Which means, let me show you. So date specific. So you can see the month is appearing and it is showing all the dates. So I have to drag and drop for all the dates and it is going to repeat till the duration of the timetable. So this is about date specific. And these classroom allocations that I do, they will also be visible in the profile of the student and the employee as well who is associated with the subject. So I'm logging in as a student and here I will go to my profile from academics and I'll under more I'll have activities and for a particular date let's say if I have some class to attend it'll be appearing here. So let me select a date. So you can see for this date it is showing that I have a timetable from 9 to 10 which mathematics will be taught by this employee and this is the classroom and this is the building. So these details are available for these employees as well. So if I log in with their profile, I'll be able to see that what is the subject I have to take and during what time and in which class and building. So this is fully about timetable.